Hello, you're on Public Spot. I'm George. Welcome to this series on infrastructure code for event driven systems in AWS. And today, I'll show you how I refactor my Celery application to switch message broker from a default RabbitMQ to AWS SQS. And so, if this episode and this channel lines up with your interest, click the subscribe button and join me in this journey of learning by doing. So, let's start coding. So I have my local copy of the repository from the previous episode. It is always a good habit to pull everything from remote to ensure that I have the latest set of code locally. Hit pull. And I also find it very useful to create a new branch to put my changes in. I'll open the appropriate test file, which is test salary config. So let me open my explorer in here. And this is the file that we're interested in. As baseline, I'll run PyTest to make sure everything is intact before I make any changes. There it is. First, my virtual environment, cd to application, and run PyTest. Now, I'll modify the module import for my workers config and use get salary app instead of app. Salary by default uses RabbitMQ as a message broker, which is what I have in my current code. I'll define a variable here called default and call the get salary app method to derive the salary application. Then I'll fix the references to these existing assertions and add a new assertion to check that my broker URL is using RabbitMQ. Save my changes and then I'll run my test again. So the first import error is complaining about missing get salary app. So let me open that module which is inside workers config.py. I want this config module to return the configured salary app. So I'll wrap the whole block with the missing method. I also want to introduce a new class in here and call it salary default config. This class will have an abstract method called get config, which will return the configuration. So what I will do is move this whole block in here and then put it inside get config. And what I need to do next is introduce a new variable inside the get salary app method called config class list. I'll define another variable called broker type and set the value to default. I also need to introduce a new variable called config class, which derived its value from config class list based off the value of the broker type. And then what I'm going to do in this derivation is if the value doesn't exist, I'm going to set the class name to my default salary default config. I want this variable to be set as an instance, so I'm going to add parentheses. And then when I update my salary app configuration, I'll extract the appropriate configuration from my config class by calling the get config. And now if I open my terminal and then run my test again, I'm getting this error in here that points back to my class. And this is because the class method needs to point to itself. So in my get config, I need to add self in there. And then run my test again. I'm going to run the whole pi test. And so to fix this new error, I'll open thumbnails.py, which is inside workers thumbnail.py. And then I need to change the import declaration here and use the method name instead of the app. And then I need to declare a module scope variable in here called app and then call the get salary app. So let me close this explorer, clear this terminal, and then run my test again. So let me go ahead and commit these changes on my local repository. So let me go back to my test salary config and then I'll duplicate this set in here. I'm going to mock the environment variable broker type and set it to SQS. I'll assert for SQS inside the broker URL. I'm not going to be needing any result backend so I can get rid of this assertion in here for the result backend property. I need to mock the SQS service around this test. 
and then I need to add the usual AWS credentials inside my mock environment variables. This mock SQS block in here mocks the SQS service, but I need to create the actual queue. And now I can start adding the assertion of my SQS URL. I'm going to rename this to SQS. Save my changes, open my terminal, and then run my test again. So the test failed, and it's complaining about attribute error. And I think we have a syntax problem in there. Save my changes, and then rerun my test. And the assertion failed because it did not see the string SQS inside the broker URL. So I'll go to my config.py and make the necessary fix. I now need to modify the broker type variable in this method to pull the value from the environment variable. So if broker type is SQS, I need to set the appropriate configuration for my Celery app. So with this, I'll create a new class called Celery SQS config. And then I'll override the getConfig method. And then inside the getConfig, I'll set the appropriate configuration parameters applicable for SQS. I've introduced a new variable here called QURL, which I've set to none for now, but I'll come back to it later. I need to update my config class list right below here inside get salary app. And I need to add a class reference to salary SQS config. Now, if I open my terminal and run my test again, now my test is complaining about the assertion of the queue URL. So inside my Celery SQS config class, I'll introduce a new method called get SQS URL. So this will involve making a number of AWS calls to fetch the proper queue URL continuously until a period of time is reached. And so in this block that I'm gonna write, I'm going to handle some kind of an exception on a queue if it doesn't exist. Now, if I go back to my get config method inside SQS, I can then change this to a call to the get SQS URL. And then I don't need my queue URL anymore. And then if I open my terminal, Clear this and run my test again. So I'm getting a parameter validation error in here, which indicates that the call to get the queue URL from SQS service is failing. And this is because the new environment variable that I've introduced called queue name has not been set. So let me go back to my test salary config and set that environment variable. Clear my terminal and run my test again. Now everything is clean. I want to add another test assertion to make sure that an exception is thrown when a queue is not set. So inside my test salary config.py, I'll duplicate this last suite of SQS tests and modify it to fit the assertion that I want to implement. I want to add a new environment variable called SQS check duration, and I'll set this to five seconds. I will still mock the SQS service, but I will not create the queues to force the application to fail. And then I'll add the block for my exception assertion. And then I can get rid of all the other assertions inside the block. Open my terminal and then run my test again. So the assertion failed. And to fix this, I'll head over to my config.py, which is right here. And then at the end of my get SQS URL method, I'll raise an exception. Save my changes. Open my terminal, clear this, and run my test again. So now I'm going to go ahead and commit my changes to my local repository. The next part to tackle are the configuration files. So I'll start with my requirements file. So I need to explicitly point my Celery module to a specific version of Celery. And then open my requirements files. And then I need to explicitly say version 5.1.2. Doing the same thing here. The Celery module integration with SQS also requires another module called Pycro. So I'll add this in my requirements file for the workers. Next set of changes are the Docker configuration files. 
and then open my worker docker file which is right here i have had issues in the past installing PyCurl module using pip so my workaround for this issue is to compile the source of the module so firstly i need to add three new libraries in my image I'll also add an environment variable inside my Docker config file to point the version of PyCurl that I want to download. I also need to reshuffle the block of library installations and separate the pip install step. And then I'll create a new run step in here to download and compile PyCurl. I will also need to uninstall the module to make sure that it gets reinstalled in the right location. The next thing I'll do is update my Docker Compose file with all the environment variables that I have introduced. I'll make some changes to use .env in my code. Note that this is only useful for me when I run my application locally, but it will make my life a lot easier. So firstly, I'll add the module in my requirements files. And then I need to use this in all my code that are referencing environment variables. And then inside app, main.py so i'm gonna add this block we're seeing this squiggle in here which indicates an unimported module and that's because i haven't installed my fresh requirements files yet and that should clear the error i'll do the same thing in entities thumbnail.py which is in here and then also on workers config.py. And now I'll create a file called .env inside the application directory. I'll add all the environment variables that I need to set. And because I don't want this file to be added in my Git repository, I'll add this in my Git ignore. Now that that's done, let me close all of these files. I can now clean up my Docker Compose file and get rid of a growing list of environment variables on both backend and worker blocks. So let me open my Docker Compose file. I need both my backend and worker services inside my Docker Compose file. Here's my .env. So I'll create a volume mapping on both of these blocks. And I'll do the same thing for my worker service. open my terminal, and then commit all my changes to my local repository. I'd like to do an integration test using an actual AWS S3 bucket and SQS. I'll go ahead and update my .env file. So firstly, I'll change the thumbnail base URL. And I also need to update my S3 bucket name and then change the queue name. And because I'm now using actual AWS resources. I need to update my AWS access key and secret with the appropriate values. So now I'll go ahead and start my containers and then CD to application and run Docker Compose to start my containers. Now let me switch to my browser and access my backend API. So I'll go ahead and access localhost docs and then click post click try it out and then i'll update the url field and then click execute scroll down to the server response now let me switch back to my vs code and check the logs the logs seem to suggest that the thumbnail was created and saved in the s3 bucket so now let me go back to my browser and then head over to my s3 bucket and then refresh this and there's my new file if i go back to my swagger ui and then copy this generated file name in here and then scroll all the way down to the get method click that try it out populate the id field with the file name and then click execute scroll down now i want to copy this url right here and then open a new tab and everything is rendering fine that's it my application is fully ready to be ported to a full aws infrastructure next time I'll look into setting up an Elastic Beanstalk infrastructure for this app using Terraform. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and send me some likes if you find this useful. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like my content and help me spread the word about this channel. Until next time, keep learning and stay safe.